Um, well, Sir Rod. Yes. Welcome to, to my home. We've gone full circle. You call in, I come to see you, and now you're with me in the studio. Thank you, Sarah. It's lovely. It's my first time here. Yeah. It's, it's so iconic to see all this <laughs> stuff, so I watch Sky every day. I know, I know you watch at home. So thank you for coming in. I mean, you pick your moments, don't you? Um, when you first spoke to us on Sky News, it was about the NHS crisis, and you've come in today to a government again in crisis. You've seen yeah. the news about Boris yeah. Johnson, uh, a committee of MPs finding that he lied to Parliament. Essentially, he's a disgraced ex-Prime Minister now. What do you make of it all? Well, you know, I'm, I was and still am a bit of a fan of Boris because I think he's got wonderful charisma. But, you know, you knew what you were getting with Boris, you know, so it's, it's not unusual. He's, he's told a few porkies over the years, so I'm, I'm not surprised. He's, he's in big trouble now, but how is he going to make a comeback? I don't know. Maybe you should talk to me. I've been making comebacks <laughs> for years. <laughs> Well, there you go. Maybe that's a collaboration. But essentially, MPs are trying to ban him from Westminster, from politics. There might not be a comeback. In terms of how the government's sitting at the moment, I know when we last spoke, when he called into Sky News, you said it was time for a change of government. Absolutely. Sir Keir Starmer has called for a general election. Where do you sit yeah. when it comes to that? Obviously, they're not going to allow a general election because they're in such a bad place. This is like, you know, being the bottom of the league. Mm. They, couldn't, they can't get any worse for the Tories. Mm. So, but they won't call an election, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Is that quite depressing to be sitting at home watching in terms of, obviously, you said you're a fan of Boris because of his personality. But when you think about, you know, what's happening and the state of politics, how it's affecting people's lives right now, cost of living crisis, the NHS, I could go on. Is it quite a depressing state of yeah, affairs? Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean... I've got people that work for me and they're struggling, you know, I'm just giving everybody a 10% rise. I gave them a rise two years ago because they're struggling. The cost yeah. of living is ridiculous. Yeah. And where's it going to go? Yeah. What's going to happen? Who's going to sort this out? Yeah. Who is going to sort yeah. it out? Yeah, well, that's a big question. You're lucky you're an employee that could afford to do that. Not everyone can. Yes. Just a final question about what's been going on today before we talk about you. Um, Part of this row is about um, the honours list, the resignation honours list yeah. that Boris Johnson put in before he left office. And there's been calls in the House of Commons today for that to be scrapped. And obviously you sit here as Sir Rod Stewart, you know, it's a different kind of honour, but just in terms of rewards that are given out, knighthoods, peerages, do you feel there should be a clearer system in terms of, you know, you were awarded for your contribution to music and your charity work, but, you know, people watching Sky News will be thinking, hang on a second, you've got personal assistance being, you know, put forward for peerages. Does all mm. of that need to change? Yeah, it, it does stink of a bit of you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Mm. Uh, I don't know the, the details of it, but I know some of the people that he chose, it was a bit of, you know, he's my mate type of thing. Yeah, it should be sorted out. Because the, the, the honours are wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. It was the proudest day of my life when I became a knighthood. And I think from that day on... People have asked me, you're doing a lot of charitable stuff. And I think, yes, yeah, because I'm a knight and I want to be seen as doing good. I think I told you this before. Yeah. Um, what do you think of my jacket and shirt? Do I work? love it. Well, to, I, I heard your jacket coming before I heard you. <laughs> it's so impressive. <laughs> I don't often like to be upstaged on the uh, style front of my show, but uh, I'll, let, I'll let you off, Sir Rod. You're a friend of the show. You're on the inside now. I've got you in my studio. And, and when we first spoke, it was during our NHS phone-in and, and you yeah. were watching at home and, and you wanted to help and you called in and you offered um, free scans at your local hospital, which was arranged. I came to see that. It was incredible, the people you were helping that day. And you, you spent a lot of time with them, talking to them about, you know, what a difference this was making um, to their treatment. Where are you now with that? Because you, you did say on that day that, you know, you wanted to continue this. So this was a long-term commitment for you. It wasn't just a publicity stunt. No, certainly not. Uh, we haven't got very far, unfortunately, Sarah. Uh, I thought there would have been a lot of people calling me up. Um, uh, we just did one yeah. at, at uh, Harlow. Yeah. And I've got another one, I think, somewhere near Glasgow coming up. But I really need everybody to help me out here, mm. you know, to... I want to pay for scans, so just get in touch. That with Sarah, really... and Sarah will get in touch yeah, with Yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll be the go-between. I'm more than happy to. Why do you think that is? Because, obviously, we, we're in the middle of a junior doctor strike. We know the NHS is struggling. We spoke five months ago yeah. about this, and, you know, it was going on a, a long time before that. Why are you finding it so difficult to, to give help? I think because it's so involved. I mean, there's so many... You know, so many people in between me and whoever is, is can organise it for me. Bureaucratic. So, yeah, exactly. Tech. That's a great word you use there, Sarah. 
Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> lots of red tape, lots, lots of paper and lots of people involved is essentially what that means. Um, so you're appealing for people, if they're in a position to help to make it easier for you, because yeah. you're ready to go on this, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and in terms of the junior doctor strike, like I said, we're right in the middle of, of another one, a 72-hour strike that's taking place as we sit here now. Do you still support them? Are the public still with them, do you feel? Do you feel like, yeah, you know... Yeah, of course I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a working-class guy, you know. They, uh, and I may have my facts wrong, but apparently they haven't had a rise for 12 years or something, you know, and this is just to get them even. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, where's all the money gone? Yeah. I know I pay millions in taxes. So where's it all gone? Yeah, that's a good point, actually, because, you know, the government does say that there's all this um, talk about um, non-DOM status and taxing the rich and the, the top percent of the millionaires. But, you know, I guess you would counter that in terms of you're a wealthy man and, you, you know, you don't hide that. And like you said, you pay a large amount to the tax man. Yeah. And you don't feel like you're seeing the results and yet they talk about taxing you more, perhaps. Yeah, but this taxing the rich, it didn't, it didn't work with Harold Wilson back in 1974, I think, because there was a, what they called a brain drain in those days. Everybody left. All the musicians left. I was on a plane with Joe Cocker, Eric Clapton, the Bee Gees, and we all left on the 4th of April before the new tax year. It doesn't work, you know, there's got to be another way. But in saying that, don't forget, we've got a war in Ukraine which is costing us, and, of course, Brexit costs us a lot of money. Yeah, being pinched on all sides. And, of course, Brexit affecting your industry in terms of music and how mm. musicians can tour and travel. Have you, have you found that? I mean, obviously, the tour that's coming up is a UK tour, but I know you go to the States. Is that something that's you've had to factor in when you think about where you're going to take your music. No, but uh, gonna, next year will be, because we have to go... We're going into Europe and playing all over Europe. Mm. So that's going to be difficult to sort out. Mm. It's, it's very difficult for small bands. It really is. Yeah. And you mentioned Ukraine. Um, again, being generous, you help refugees in this mm. country, which I know you, you've spoken about. Talk to me about how that came about, what you did, and... As we know, you don't just like to do something and walk away. Are you still supporting them? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, um, we started out, my two nephews said, we've got to do something about this uncle. So we're going to get to three vans, drive all the way to Ukraine, drop off lots of supplies, and it's well documented. And then they drove back and picked up about 12 or 15 refugees, mm -hmm. dropped them all in Berlin and came back. That was the first step. Mm -hmm. So then we took another step and I rented a house, whole house for a whole family. Mm -hmm. And they were so appreciative, such gorgeous people. Mm. And, you know, a couple of them work for me now, a housekeeper yeah. and a gardener. Yeah. So um, just want, us, want them to win, I want us to win. Yeah, I mean, we're following it here on Sky News closely, as you know, as you're an avid viewer. How um, many villages have we got now? Yeah, so I know. We... Do you know what? Where's Sir Michael Clark? Um, Sir Michael Clark, I'm knighted him. He's that good. Professor Michael Clark, when you need him. We'll get an update on that a little bit later. Um, let's talk about your UK summer tour. It's kicking off at the end of this month. Um, yeah. And I read that it's... You've called it your last rock and roll tour, which sounds to me like the end of an era. Well, you could put it that way. It's just... Um... You know, I've been singing Hot Legs and Maggie May for 50-odd years. That's because they're more. classics. Yeah. It's, it's time for a change. All things must end. And I, I just want to become... I want to sing jazz, and that's mm -hmm. a wide field. You know, I did the American Songbook, which sold 27 million, and I've just done a, a, an album with Jules Holland, which is a swing album. So we're going to do that. Uh, and when's that coming out, the collaboration um, with Jules Holland? Mother's Day next year. Excellent. Good timing. Um... So that's the kind of direction you're going in. And, you know, does it feel a little bit sad? Because, you know, you mentioned the song Maggie May, and, you know, whenever I tell people that I'm speaking to you, that is always the song that comes up. There are others, obviously. But those songs have such a personal resonance for people, special moments in their life, special events. Are you feeling quite sad to sort of retire that from your touring portfolio? Yeah, a little bit. It's, um... That's what songs are all about. They bring back memories. For you, let's see a Maggie May. Tonight's the night. I think more children were born or conceived in 1976 <laughs> when Tonight's the Night came out than any other song. But songs are all about memories, eventually. Yeah. So, but you know, uh, a special event or something, I'll, I'll sing them again. But right now, I just want to do some jazz. Yeah, no, I, I, swing music. I, I hear you. Something a bit different. And yeah. like you said, you've, it's something you've done before very successfully. So now you want to concentrate on yeah. that. And. Um, I was reading an interview with Sir Paul McCartney and um, he was talking about 
AI in music. And he was talking about the fact that he might experiment with it to put together a final Beatles song, essentially lifting John Lennon's voice for an old demo tape and putting it into new music. Where do you stand with that kind of experimentation? Is that something you like to look at or are you with a band of artists who are saying, this is not good for, for individual creativity? Yeah, it, yeah, I must admit, I haven't done too much reading about it, but I did know that Paul has, has put together a single. It, it's scary, I mean, it, it could be the destruction of mankind as we know it, apparently, so we have to protect ourselves. Yeah. Uh, as far as music goes, well, I don't really care. No. No one sounds like me. And just finally, for you, there's plenty more on the horizon in terms of, you know, albums, a different, a, a new tour, and obviously a different kind of tour, I would imagine, when you decide to go out again. But as we talk about Sir Elton, your friend, he's bringing down the curtain on his touring at Glasgow next weekend at Glastonbury Festival, which you've played. Uh, it's his big farewell show, and he's done this farewell tour. Um, he's drawing the curtain. Do you have any thoughts about ending touring? Because I would imagine that's a big decision. You've been touring for decades and seem to be still yeah, really enjoying it. I do. What, what, does, what does the next chapter look like for you? Uh, the same thing, but on a smaller scale, different music. I don't think Elton will just pack in like that. Mm. He'll sing those songs on a special occasion, and, and so will I. Mm. It's just that month after month being on tour that we're not going to do. And, and why is that? Is that just because, you know, a change of lifestyle for you? You mentioned your children going to school here. Is it just, just something you've no, that's thrown exactly out it. of? Yeah. I, love, I love the British. I love British. I yeah. love Britain. And I think this Elton's the same. He has his children. I've got my children. We're happy and yeah. we want to be close to them because yeah. we're not getting any younger. <laughs> and, of course, your, um, your wife, Penny, you've both spoken about it extensively, um, you know, is involved in the police and I know she was uh, policing the coronation. That's a... That's a big part of her identity now. She's very proud to, you know, represent the police in this country. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on the state of the police now? And again, it comes back to, well, we look at what's been unfolding in Nottingham and the police, you know, doing their job in that and the, the most horrific of circumstances. What, what are your views on, you know, how the police are treated in this country and scene? Um, yeah, that's a hard one mm. because... It's different to different people, I don't know people, how to answer right? it. I would okay. hate to say that they're, they're not doing their job, but apparently they're not. Yeah. So um, I think we should be supportive mm. of the police, and uh, Penny loves it. She adores being a copper, mm. you know. And she does she feel the support? <laughs> yeah, I bet she does. And um, does she feel the support of people when she's out and about doing her She really does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she really does. When she did the coronation... She was so proud. There was a picture of her in the papers looking straight ahead, <laughs> beaming like this with the coach going behind. You yeah. Know. She adores it. And it's great for her to get out of the house and do it. I push her to do it. Yeah. You know. And you, and you managed to make it work with all your touring and, and all her yeah. clips as well. It's really commendable. Um, so, Rod Stewart, pleasure as always. Thank you so much for coming okay, in Sarah, to see me. Thank you. thank you. I'm a big fan, you know. Yeah. <laughs>